so uh, hello everyone we are going to start uh, our uh, nine episode for how to start refractive surgery uh, i'm going to um, to represent uh, our panelists and our speakers today so uh, dr mohammed al amri is not going to be with us today because he's traveling uh, uh, and I'm going to mediate the session with our uh, eminent uh, panelist, Dr. Osama Glady. He's a consultant ophthalmologist at Morfid Eye Hospital, Dubai, specializing in cornea and cataract refractive vision correction surgery, adjuncting clinical associate professor of ophthalmology at Mohammed bin Rashid University uh, of Medicine and Health Science in Dubai. And also uh, Dr. Nancy Rakad, he's got, she's going to join us in around 15 minutes. Uh, because she's traveling also, but she's going to be with us. She's a head of cornea specialist at the Royal Medical uh, Service of Jordan. She's a cornea refractive uh, consultant surgeon. Uh, our program today we're going to be uh, like this. Dr. Khaled El Arfash from Saudi Arabia is going to talk about uh, management of previous at the general, no special issues, but he's going to give a prospective view about how to manage previous then I'm going to have a debate between myself about EDOF versus multivocal or trifocal IOLs. Uh, then uh, Dr. Sandeep Mitra is going to talk about Bris Beyond. And uh, followed by Dr. Safwan al Bayati, he's going to talk about uh, Bris B uh, Max. And then we are going to finalize our uh, session by a very nice presentation uh, by Dr. Khaled, uh, Khaled Ayesh. Uh, um, uh, he's going to join us soon also. Uh, and I'm going, I want to introduce uh, our speaker, Dr. Khaled Al Arfash. He's a consultant of farmer surgeon, assistant professor, and the chairman of Thalmology University uh, of the MAM uh, Saudi Arabia. He's a category of surgeon. Dr. Safon Al Bayati, uh, he's a consultant of thalmologist and the medical director of the New Vision Eye Center, uh, FACO refractive surgeon, cataract LASIK vitreoretinal surgeon. Dr. Sandeep Mitra, he's a consultant ophthalmologist at Zahra Hospital, Dubai uh, Emirates. And Dr. Khaled Ayash, he's an ophthalmic uh, surgeon and laser specialist at Dar al Hikma Eye uh, Clinical uh, Medicine, Medical School uh, at Jordan University. So uh, and now we are going to start uh, our uh, uh, course with uh, Dr. Khaled Al Arfaj. He's going to give us a prospective view how to manage. Uh, Priest Paiopia, uh, from his point of view. Please, Dr. Khaled. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ashra, for uh, your nice uh, presentation about the course and the speakers and the agenda of our meeting today. Uh, my uh, slide is uh, clear. I don't know. Is it okay? Yes. Yes, it's clear. Okay. So, so um, generally, I will I will talk about. It's not like an introduction. Uh, my colleagues will cover uh, every aspect of my uh, uh, talk in details. Uh, generally, I will talk about presbyopia, then I will uh, uh, go around many options available nowadays managing uh, this, uh, I mean, phenomena. I call it affecting everybody, actually, uh, more than uh, the years specifically uh, those of having uh, metropia or if hyperopia. Uh, those of having myopia might not have this kind of uh, phenomena of, of losing the, the ability of reading uh, even after 40 or 50 because of their uh, status of myopia. I don't have any financial disclosure to uh, disclose in, in this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, we know this. Uh, this is basically the uh, breast biopia. The, this is inability of the, uh, the patient to uh, read or see the near objects because of loss of elasticity uh, of the uh, lens. And this is uh, the uh, famous uh, table, seeing the amplitude of accommodation versus the age. Uh, well, we see uh, whenever we are really in a childhood. Uh, five years or 10, we have 15 to 12. And whenever we reach 40, we are losing. We are having some sort of four uh, depth of uh, accommodation range from uh, case to case. But this is the general accommodative power in the lens. And the near point 
is increasing with the loss, loss of the amplitude of accommodation. Whenever we are reaching 75, uh, we are almost, we don't have much of uh, amplitude of uh, accommodation. And uh, as I mentioned, this depends on the status of refractive error the patient have. Those of having uh, some sort of myopia might have delayed uh, onset of breast myopia. And this is the, uh, I mean, graph seeing the, how we lose our accommodation with aging. So what is the symptoms of breast myopia? Characteristic signs of breast myopia can include, uh, but does not uh, specifically uh, have very specific, I mean, uh, feature. The, this most important is loss of uh, ability to read, but uh, the patient might experience uh, excess strain and post reading a book, throbbing headache sometime after attempting to view object nearby, feeling tired and exhausted, after working, uh, things in close focus, uh, blurred vision, uh, and, and there are so many presentation, usually the patient might come and tell you, uh, they might not say, I, I, I lost my uh, ability to, to read, but the, the, the blurred vision, the uh, headache, throbbing headache, inability to read the small prints, frequent squinting, sometimes even squinting of the eyes might be the presenting symptom of this, uh, this uh, I mean, breast biopia. So accommodation gradually decreases with age, as I mentioned, and uh, global uh, prevalence of breast biopia in 2015 has been estimated to be 1.3 billion uh, people are, uh, I mean, having and I mean, uh, having this breast biopia, but it will reach uh, almost uh, 1.8 billion by 2030. Currently, the surgical options have been offered to less than one percent of these uh, patients. So it is a really huge market to uh, help these uh, patients, and they will see the options can be offered to them. So breast biopia is a loss of accommodation. Surgical options uh, might include application of laser, corneal inlays, implantation of accommodati accommodating or multifocal or trifocal lenses, or even the new, the new uh, lenses are the extended depth of focus uh, lenses. So uh, basically, we might treat the patient with the, with the glasses. Uh, either progressive or trifocal or even bifocal lenses, even the contact lenses, but it has no much of uh, successes in many of these because the contact lens, uh, I mean, uh, can induce dry eye and it's not much, uh, uh, I mean, helping the patient. I, did, I, I saw some patients already happy some sort, but they don't, they cannot continue with these uh, contact lenses. There are, uh, I mean, three types of contact lenses uh, offered in the market. There is concentric contact lenses and aspheric and segmented having near and uh, far and different technology to introduce to have the patient at um, the, uh, the focal points and the contact lenses. So what about the surgical methods we are concerned about now? We can replace uh, the crystal lens with the, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, I mean, uh, procedure chamber IOL, either uh, multifocal, trifocal, um, or EDF, or even accommodating uh, IOL, or in, I mean, having monovision, like giving the patient uh, an emetropia for the dominant eye and having the patients undercorrected for the uh, non-dominant eye, having the monovision concept in case of uh, lens-based approach of uh, treating the uh, breast biopsy patients. What about the refractive surgical uh, corneal uh, lens, we can have the uh, uh, corneal inlays, and many of the, uh, I mean, surgeons, they don't like these because of the, the loss of the accommodation with time, uh, so it, it has a transient effect. The uh, femtosecond laser intrastromal ring incisions like intracore, brispy, lasik, or brispy, and I, I believe my colleagues will cover that very uh, well. And the, uh, I mean, secretion implants and secretion ablation does not have, uh, I mean, successes nowadays, but this is like a uh, general concept, how we treat the surgical, uh, surgically the uh, breast biopsy. And this is the conductive keratoplasty. I think it faded out and nobody now is doing the, uh, I mean, conductive keratoplasty to help the breast biopsy. And uh, this is the multifocality uh, concepts in doing the uh, cornea, either in, in the, uh, cornea like the corneal inlays or the, the uh, uh, even at the lens based having the multifocal lenses 
uh, having the far intermediate or in, even not near vision. What about the cornea? I think even the brispy max might give the central brispy lasik and the hyperopia brispyopia having peripheral brispy lasik and supracore will have, so this is the concept of these uh, technologies. And the, I mean, generally it induced multifocality in the cornea and brisk beyond having the laser uh, blended vision. And we will hear from our colleagues uh, how these technologies will work and we'll know their, I mean, uh, experiences and the successes they made in their uh, patients. There are a lot of uh, articles uh, uh, mentioning the uh, these kind of technologies uh, having the massive quality in the cornea with limited in my perspective and my opinion limited uh, uh, success uh, rate uh, because they have lack of quality of vision actually this is one of the uh, important uh, things can I mean you have if, if, if you are thinking about multifocality in the cornea they lack also uniformity of the ablation of profiles and they lack some sort of uniform patient selection criteria. There is no specific uniform patient selection criteria in, the, in these uh, cases. And they really lack also proper follow-up protocol to see how this will work and for how long. Sometimes you have some successes in the first few, uh, I mean, uh, months, even two or three years, then the third year or fourth year, you might have, uh, I mean, regression of these cases. So. Uh, they, they have very high regression rate, and that's why the limit, there is a limited use of brispy uh, LASIK or using the multi in the core. And this is, uh, I mean, some sort, of, even uh, other, uh, I mean, area of uh, technologies and having the uh, camera or, or small apertures, lenses, or there are a lot of things. And whenever you have a lot of options offering to the patients, you have to know that there are no perfect solution of uh, brispyopia, and there is a limited, uh, I mean, advantage, I mean, lim limited uh, results in many uh, of these options. But in um, my opinion, uh, uh, the lens-based way of treating brispyopia have better uh, outcome and uh, sustained and uh, long-term uh, uh, treating the uh, uh, brispyopia. So uh, it is really uh, was a long way to reach the modern cataract surgery. And we know that cataract surgery is refractive surgery and we can treat the myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, as well as recently the brispyopia with, uh, um, I mean, uh, very considerable uh, results, good results in these uh, cases. Yes, definitely there is no perfect solution, but uh, in my opinion, the lens-based, uh, uh, especially for those of 50 plus or so, the uh, the um, um, lens based approach is the uh, best way to go. Uh, in two thousand nine versus two thousand twenty or twenty two, we have a lot of lenses, and I think the I mean one one of the speakers, my colleagues, will talk about it in details. And uh, nowadays we have the edge of uh, lenses. Uh, uh, it, it has a, it is really forgiving lens. Uh, it forgive even for the ocular surface disease, you might even help the patients with post RK or even very mild corneal scar or some sort of not suitable cases of the trifocal lenses. These lenses might help the patient the, the, to, to give the, the, the surgeon uh, uh, the area of successes in these uh, cases. Uh, it has a little uh, chromatic abrasions, little uh, the halos and glare, and give a uh, very considerable, uh, I mean, uh, intermediate vision, which is many, in many cases, it has a uh, uh, really good uh, success in of, of the cases. And it's a very functional near vision. It's really not the best, uh, I mean, near vision, but it's really functional vision, especially if you, uh, I mean, manipulate with the minor, uh, I mean, monovision in, in, in cases Micro of the uh, edo. Yeah, micro My yeah, micro monovision. Yes, micro monovision. So, uh, whenever we are talking about the uh, edof, we we know that it's tolerable even for the decentration and the uh, angle kappa. We can even use it for the post lasik and post RK, as I mentioned. So, uh, many lenses are available in the uh, in the market: Lucidus, Vivity, Medicontour. Um, uh, and if, if this is the approach of the big companies to to go through that. Yes, definitely it might not 
replace the market of the tripocal lenses, but it helps uh, to uh, uh, provide a really good uh, outcome in, in many cases. We have the pen optics vividity, and, and there are a lot of uh, perfection perfection scale in these cases. We we didn't go for the I mean for the perfect lens so far, but we are uh, I mean hoping to see some very high success rate in, in, in the near future. So I will not go through the the, the technology in that, but uh, definitely I might even end up my I mean presentation about. Uh, having the micro monovision and the edof, or even the trifocal lenses, the, this is the, one of the new technology and artists uh, uh, having the trifocal. This is the trifocal lens. It's not a, an extended depth of focus lens, but the uh, mid, what do you call it, mid, it give you uh, the intermediate and the far. It, so it works like an edof uh, case, but uh, it is an, a trifocal lens. And the plus lens and these and these lenses uh, give you the what, what we need, know about it this and the very good near vision as well as the considerable considerable good far vision with the loss of in the intermediate. So the mid and plus it, it is like customized trifocal lens. Uh, we call it by uh, ocular phase of continuity of the range of uh, of vision near intermediate as well as far and this is what we uh, know about it if you have the mid you see the excellent intermediate as well as uh, very good uh, uh, far vision but the near is really limited and the plus you have the uh, and the the near vision and the far vision is is good but the intermediate will be covered by the mid and this is what we call it. This is the last article. I mean, seeing the total depth of focus of five premium multifocal intrac lenses, and you can go for the conclusion. Seeing most of these uh, lenses, like the uh, uh, pan optics and the fine vision, the thickness, give a very good near as well as far, but the intermediate might be not as uh, good as we if we customize the uh, trifocal lens to cover the intermediate vision. So uh, I might end up uh, my uh, presentation with this slide, uh, knowing that there is no perfect solution, but definitely we are uh, witnessing a revolution to help, uh, I mean, to help a lot of patients suffering from breast biopia. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, excellent, successful stories uh, either in lens-based, as I uh, mentioned, or even cornea-based uh, approach managing uh, breast biopia. And we will uh, really, uh, um, I mean, want to hear from our colleagues to see their experience, uh, I mean, uh, with, whether they are in, in favor of having the uh, corneal approach, uh, I mean, uh, treating breast biopia. I, I, I know this is case by case and definitely can be uh, combined in, in your practice, but uh, definitely there are some sort of uh, if, uh, each surgeon will 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 go uh, deviate a little bit toward either a corneal based uh, uh, approach of treating presbyopia versus the lens uh, based uh, treating the presbyopia. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Khalid, for this uh, broad. Uh... A view about uh, presbyopia. Um, can you stop uh, sharing, please? Uh, and I'm happy that you mentioned also uh, the new lens, uh, the crystal lens. I'm happy to, that uh, because you, you opened the way for me. Uh, can uh, um, hi uh, hi uh, Khalid from uh, he's talking from uh, Zurich, I know. And uh, Dr. Sandeep, uh, welcome yeah. to the panel. Yes. Hello, everyone. How are you? No, I'm fine. fine. How are you? Uh, Dr. Osama, no, uh, no. You, we have uh, three minutes to discuss with uh, uh, Dr. Khalid. If you have a question, please. Well, Dr. Uh, uh, Ashraf, uh, I have one, uh, yani few mm. comments. I will not take the three three minutes. I think that Dr. Khalid, uh, he, he was in a comprehensive uh, uh, presentation, a very nice presentation that summarized all our our talk and the door now I, and i'm strongly agree with him uh, 
this not because I like him. No, no, it's it's because the what he talk. Um, so I strongly agree with him around a few points that there is no sharp point, sharp line in in this treatment, and uh, uh, the new approach for the laser and the lenses it opened a new door. That door it was closed in front of us when we were doing the laser correction or laser based correction of presbyopia. So when we were doing uh, Prisbimax in uh, 2009 and 10, we were asking ourselves, what, what then? What, what about the cataract post? What we will do for those patients? Um, uh, so uh, here, we need to know a few things that the treatment on laser base is a, a, a spherical abrasion negative creation. And the basis of the edof lens, most of the edof lens is the negative spherical abrasion. So it adds... Uh, uh, to our work that those patients, when they will have the laser based treated patient, when they will have cataract, we have now a material, we have a lenses that have, uh, 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 which is called the EDOF, uh, on the same concept of the treatment that we can add it. And that's what we are doing now. We are adding to those patients that's been treated by uh, laser based uh, uh, presbyopia. We are adding these lenses and they regain they return back to their near, near vision in spite of that. Uh, the power of the, for example, some of uh, EDOFs, it uh, provide one diopter at the cornea, and those that that lens is uh, precisely, it add to the corneal addition that we added, uh, and the result, it's a uh, it's very good promising result for those patients that uh, they have been treated with the laser base and developed cataract and the treated with the, the cataract extraction with EDOF. Dr. Osama, uh, do you have any question for Dr. Khalid uh, before we no, uh, go to that? No, that's very well covered all aspect. I think I'm looking for the other speaker to talk about individual one, but always very okay. challenged task to treat presbyopia. There's no perfect solution. And I think it's very important to understand your patient motivation, age factors play a important role really. Dr. Ashraf, uh, could you just, I, I'm thankful, very thankful for Dr. Osama and Dr. Safwan and your comments are really valuable. Uh, I, I think as you mentioned, Dr. Osama, patient counseling is, is really crucial to understand what the patient is in need and he, if there is side effects or um, negative uh, points uh, about the even laser approach or even lens approach should be discussed thoroughly before the uh, doing any uh, procedure. And I think this is one of the cornerstone of the success of, of, of the um, management or option to give the patient. I usually give the patients a lot of time to understand what he's, he what might even experience, especially for the halos and glare or the limitation of the quality of the, the vision and the, and the far. So uh, I don't know if I mentioned that in my presentation or not, but patient counseling is really crucial. Uh, before uh, I mean discussing or even going to do the uh, any option of these. Thank you so much. Okay, Dr. Safwan, do I go to the, my presentation? Yes, exactly. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, my presentation it's between edof and trifocal or multifocal. Uh, I do it like um, like uh, a competition or a debate between these two lenses. What's positive, what's negative, uh, and uh, which patients can we use? How to finalize if there is a new technology for trifocal, um, um, merging bit, uh, the, the idea uh, between two two EDOF lenses, maybe. So I, I'm going to to make it little bit uh, little bit basic because. This is a course that everyone wants to start uh, like a presbyopia treatment. So I have no financial disclosure regarding this presentation, but these are my disclosures, companies that I'm consulting and speaker to some of them. So as we know that cataract surgery is causes of visual vision impairment, as we all know. So the go your goal when you are a surgeon to restore vision and to restore vision in our century, this vision should be restore a refractive procedure. It's not just a remove the cataract. So you must make the patient, because we are in the new technologies, that you, ma you must make your patient offering a little bit of spectacle independence. So 
you have a, a lot of technologies, either mini mono, micro mono, uh, edof lenses, extended mo uh, depth of uh, uh, enhanced monofocal, trifocal, multifocal, bifocal, a lot of things. And you have a, um, a refractive and diffractive optics. So if we look for EDOF lenses, it's intra, it's a, it has an advanced optical technology that it is increased the range of focus. I, do, I don't like that it extended depth of focus. I like the increased range of focus, giving me uh, more idea about these lenses. It give a clear, a clear vision ranging from far to intermediate. Uh, but the close activities become an obstacle with these EDO flats. So people do a micro monovision using the EDO. So how the EDO lens work? It's bending the light entering to the eye from intermediate and far distance and focusing this light into a single focal point on the retina. This allows uh, to focus an object at these distances, simultaneously providing good intermediate and distant vision through the lens. So the most common used multifocal for a long time were the bifocal lenses, and still a lot of companies have this technology, which create two primary focal lenses. The insufficient intermediate vision that these lenses, the bifocal, uh, give it one of their main drawbacks, especially due to expanding needs of modern our modern patients. So the trifocal technology uh, came and subsequently introduced, offering third focal point for the intermediate uh, vision. So, however, the greater division of the light that occurs as it passed through the trifocal IOLs, it also responsible for optical phenomena that we are going to highlight it in our next slides. So, this very nice table represents three types of focus, the bifocal, trifocal, adof. And there is a good comparison between the distant vision, intermediate vision, near vision, reading performance, contrast sensitivity, and optical phenomena. And from this table, you find that the EDOF is good in the intermediate, but low in the near. And the trifocal is equal in both, but we have an optical phenomenon. And the bifocal has no intermediate nearly. It has a distant and near, but it has a huge optical phenomenon. So if we want to have a debate between EDOF, bifocal, and trifocal, we should look for five main subjects. The quality of intermediate and near, the defocus curve of the EDOF and the trifocal, the contrast sensitivity, the reading uh, performance, and the optical uh, phenomena. So we are going to put a debate between EDOF and trifocal. What about the quality of intermediate and near vision? Trifocal lenses were developed in order to ameliorate the quality of intermediate vision through the incorporate with the third focal point that bifocal IOLs lacked. So several studies have investigated whether implantation of trifocal held it promised to improve the intermediate vision compared to EDOF lenses. If we want to see what did the patient see, which is the luminosity, which it's a measure of the visual acuity for the bifocal EDOF or trifocal lenses, we find that unfortunately no international agreement on the luminosity settings and such visual accuracy measurement can lead to inaccurate comparison. The nearest advent of the IOL development are the EDOF. So, refer to the extended range of folk, uh, vision, IOLs which have the ability to create a continuous foresight through the implantation of a spherical abrasion. And this will go into pre the presence of the optically active transitional zone that's already in the some EDOF lenses and the trifocal lenses. Very important to highlight that since there is a numerous study have been conducted comparing the EDOF lenses and the trifocal, as well the IOLs, 
This is very important. A lot of studies we are going to see. So what they said, they said that the Edof lenses exhibit similar results in terms of distant vision when compared to the trifocal or bifocal. So all of the lenses or distant visions are okay. But very nice study uh, was done, also including the mini well of the Edof lenses, and was assisted that in terms of visual outcome and the contrast safety, and the investigators reported that the mini well Edof IOLs had similar uncorrected distant vision outcomes to the previous study using the multifocal. So Edof and trifocal have the same distance vision. But the performance of the trifocal and the Edof lenses appears similar in intermediate. So what about near? However, in photopic condition, there is no statistically significant difference in uncorrected intermediate vision between the Edof lenses and the trifocal. But if we look, we are going to find that there is a superiority of the trifocals over the Edof lenses for the near vision. So trifocal more superior than Edof in the near vision. And this makes the patients using the Edof will going to have a usage of spectacle lenses for the near vision. The second debate will going to be between the defocus curves. If we are going to compare, evaluation of the defocus curve is important as it offers a practitioner as patient information. Also, the bifocals has a V-shaped defocus curve. We are going to see it. So these are the three defocus curves for the bifocal, the trifocal, and the edof. And you are going to see the very characteristic V-shaped uh, defocus curve for the bifocal and the trifocal is a little bit continuous and the uh, edof is good for intermediate but not good for me so not to make it uh, yeah very important to highlight this the pupil size the pupil size is very important when you are using multifocal and the edof lenses so the larger the aperture 4.5 Lead, lead, leads to decrease the distance vision for the patient and decrease and uh, and also that when the pupil size decreases more than three, you are going to lose all the uh, zones either for the uh, the trifocal or for the edof. So edof it provides the best vision when it is two millimeter pupil, and the trifocal. Uh, show distance, uh, the trifocal showed better pupil independence, but both bifocal and EDOF lenses. But the EDOF needs at least two millimeter pupil uh, diameter to provide a good vision. Okay. Contrast sensitivity. We found that the superiority for the EDOF over the trifocal for the contrast sensitivity. Reading performance. We are going to find that the reading ability is increased in the trifocal and decrease in the uh, EDOF lenses. Optical phenomena, a huge problem. We, we found that the, the multifocal or the EDOF implant the occurrence of undesirable optical phenomena, but the optical phenomena is decreased for the EDOF than for the trifocal IOLs. When we compare between the EDOF and trifocal, uh, the dysphotopic phenomena, there is no, but the rest of the phenomena is very high in the trifocal uh, IOLs. This is the curve we always need when we put it, a multiple, uh, multiple, IOL, multiple focal IOL or trifocal IOLs, multifocal, to see the near, the intermediate vision. And it is very difficult to obtain this. And this, this is the very nice, Binocular depth of focus 3.5 over the 0.1 log mark. So it extended from one to minus four. It's a very good distance uh, range of focus for the patients. And it's, it's happy for me when I put my patient on eye trace, I found that he has a very range, effective range of focus from uh, minus, minus nearly minus 1.5 to plus one 
which make the patient distant, intermediate, and nearly a near is good. And to obtain this, you should have two lenses at least. So as Dr. Khaled uh, mentioned in his uh, presentation about this very nice study, it was done in 2020. And it co was comparing between fine vision, panoptics, thickness symphony, and using the two lenses of, a, of a new lenses from crystal lens, it is the artist symbiosis. They have the mid and plus. The mid and plus, the mid covers uh, some range and the plus covers the rest. So binocularly, you are decreasing a lot of uh, optical phenomena uh, when you are using these two lenses. And this is the curve of the four of the five lenses. And you see, how they concluded this study that the uh, total depth of focus, which is a very important, uh, similar between the multifocals, all the multifocals, but when you combine the artist symbiose mid and, and, and uh, the plus and mid, you are going to have the same as one lens when you plant, say, uh, panoptics, panoptics in both eyes, but uh, that, that these two lenses have different uh, point of foci and this uh, and different uh, also diffractive zones, the numbers, and this will decrease the optical phenomena uh, in the rest. So binocularly, the patient will going to have increased range of focus, but with less optical phenomena. So when we conclude, either it is Jeff or Jeff, what is over the last 10 years, the new IOL technology uh, have revolution cataract surgery, and the choice of the IOL depends on each patient needs after uh, thorough uh, questioning about their work and daily habits. Very important. You have a lot of range of focus, bifocal, trifocal, EDOF lenses, depends on his uh, driving a car or not, driving an aeroplane or not, he's a housemate, he's, he's working or not, how, how, uh, what is the distance? Very important. EDOF lenses provide better contrastivity, decreases spectral independence for distant intermediate, but you are going to see it need a near glass. Trifocal can cover all the ranges, but the patient should aware about the optical uh, problems, optical phenomena that the patient can uh, face. It. So we can end it with this very nice a table comparing all the, the lenses, uh, how it works with different uh, methods. And my take home message is, remember that the critical importance of carefully selecting and matching your patients to the most appropriate IOL. Don't skimp on the chair time and make sure you choose patients with appropriate psychological and clinical profile. These are not a normal lenses. Always remember they should have healthy eyes, in particular, healthy tear film and no dry eye syndromes, negligible side effect, faster neural adaptation, and the three edo true EDOF result in more satisfied patients. Everyone should be happy, but not just the patient, but also the surgeon should be happy. Thank you so much uh, and waiting for your questions. Uh, great, thanks, Dr. Ashraf. I think that it was a very nice uh, uh, a debate between the uh, IDOF and uh, and uh, trifocal. Really, um, uh, this um, debate it's uh, uh, it need uh, yeah, need a lot of discussion. So uh, you, you made it in a in a very good way, as as usual, definitely. And uh, you made it so easy in a way that uh, uh, our audience and for us, uh, we can understand the compare the simple comparison between two. But let us comment in one a few things. Edof yes, by edof, sure. it's a peer to reduce the uh, dysphotopsia. And to reduce yes. the dysphotopsia, we cannot add more than 1.5 negative spherical abrasion on the center because what you said, it's, it's only a, a, a comparison between the pure EDOF, because here we need to, to know for all the, our audience that we have two uh, family of EDOF, EDOF pure that provide an intermediate and distance, and that pure is coming from the negative spherical abrasion of around 1.25 to 1.5 at, at the lens base, which gives around plus one at the cornea. That's the pure EDOF. And that's the comparison between the trifocal and pure EDOF that yes, uh, fully agree that the 
only issues is that the near is missed and the dysphotopsia it's reduced into a valuable amount but still there so the question why we cannot create a pure edof in a way that it can cover the near because once we will increase the negative spherical abrasion above 1.5 on a lens level we will have the same dysphotopsia on the distance and that's away from the definition of edof but what's the new the new that you mentioned it at the end of the uh, at the uh, of your presentation a very nice presentation is the uh, hybrid or the combined or and dr khalid definitely he mentioned it by by the new lens is the uh, 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 emerge of the aid of technology, which is the negative spherical abrasion, adding to the diffractive or refractive, like Lucidus or Symphony or the new lens that. So Symphony is the diffractive added to its uh, uh, negative spherical abrasion. So they they are able to reduce the rings number from, for example, the bifocal uh, 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 bifocal from Johnson and Johnson. It was. Uh, 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 22 ring now nine ring with the symphony now i do agree fully the aim is to reduce and control the this photopsia and add to the near but they reached that's a big question second i yeah yes first question yeah, just, that, just that, 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 they reach to the goal of the near no still when they compare in their study the panoptics and the symphony panoptics was better for near in spite of that panoptics is still it's not good as other other lenses that have a pure diffractive for the near now other issues like lucidus lucidus is a is a, a edof and a, a refractive so it's a it's a combination and this combination reduced the center refractive to reduce the the uh, dysphotopsia but still lucidus can provide 2.5 at the cornea level and that's very important to know so i do agree fully with you that tri trifocal is the best for near if the patient can withstand dysphotopsia by a good selection to prevent um, a further dysphotopsia from a corneal high order abrasions or we need to uh, have a micro uh, monovision for those with the EDOF. I just highlight on this. Yeah. Lucidus and Isopure, yeah. they are pure EDOF lenses. But they are, they, they are uh, but but the crystal lens, but the crystal lens, the artist symbiose, it's a trifocal IOLs. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Lucidus, it's not a pure, it's a it's a EDOF plus a refractive. Uh, the refractive okay. is so, the base is the base is refractive and the center is the negative spherical abrasion yes it's like the isopure like yeah, the isopure. yeah. I, I didn't i like, didn't say no uh, like the isopure and yeah uh, like but, the isopure. Uh, they are they, they are a category of edof yeah but the crystallines the what mentioned dr Khaled mentioned the crystalline the artist symbiose they are not yeah. edof they are trifocal yeah yeah but trifocal refractive one lens, modified Diffractive, modified, diffract, modified according to mm. the number of the rings, yeah, and the space and the spacing between the rings. Exactly, because yes. when you add the, the the spaces of the rings and the number, that helps the near vision. If you add the negative spherical abrasion to them, deduct one point five. The one point five that deducted, uh, replaced by the negative spherical abrasion. That one point five it uh, uh, enabled them to reduce the number of the rings and the distance of the rings. So they increase yes. the entrance of the light. That's our aim to enhance the distance vision. This yes. is the whole, so, uh, yeah. So, so, when when you put one, Dr. Ashraf, so thank you so much. Uh, yeah. I, so when, appreciate. When, you put one, uh, when you put one lens here and one lens here, yeah. binocularly, you have a blended extended yeah. range of focus. Yeah. Here's we decrease the halos because when you yeah. decrease the number of the rings, no. the does not you are not removing the optical phenomena, but you are decreasing the optical phenomena. Exactly, that's a, another combination. Yeah. Anyway, now. Doctor Khaled. Yeah, I really uh, enjoyed your presentation, Doctor Ashraf. You really touched it, and you close the gap. Uh, 
uh, that's what my what I feel when when as the guy or everybody here, the panelists or the speakers here, are talking uh, about their experiences and their uh, practice. And whenever we saw that that type of lens, it really uh, draw my attention, as you did, and even Dr. Safwan and others that. I think that the way to go is the customization and for the for, for, for the lenses. Yeah, for each patient, for each or even for the lenses, the lenses itself. Yeah. Yes. Uh, exactly. Definitely, we might not have the same for both eyes, the same, exactly. uh, I mean, types of, of, of lenses. So it, it really helps very much and it close the small gap. Yes, definitely there are success stories, but we really want to even close that gap and that type of lens when I uh, attended the presentation and I read about it, uh, I thought this is this is the way to go and many of the uh, companies might go the same way. It's the same idea whenever we have, uh, as Dr. Safwan is mentioning, the refractive uh, multifocal, then they, they go for the diffractive, then they yeah, go for the trifocal lenses, exactly. then they go for the edo, then they go now for customization. Yeah. So as I mentioned, there is a revolution and we are yeah. witnessing that. And uh, we are thankful for the companies, for these researches, for of providing these options for us to help our patients. Definitely nowadays we can talk, uh, I mean, with confidence, giving the patient the best on the market. Definitely even, even two or three years will make the difference in the near future. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Dr. Khalid. Uh, before we go to the next, I want to ask Dr. Safwan to highlight yeah. something yeah. To, to people who don't know. What is the difference between the extended monofocal, the enhanced monofocal, and yes. the new type of the EDOF? When they choose, how they, in, in, in two minutes, what is the difference between them? To, to everyone uh, listening to us now. Here, it's, a, it's the technology, technology based. When we are talking about pure EDOF, it means that we are targeting the intermediate vision only because it will provide plus one on the cornea. This plus one coming from a pure negative spherical abrasion that I will talk about it in the cornea. It's, it's exactly there on the lens and nothing more. The other side, uh, the other part of the lens is only a monofocal for distance. And those can be used for those patients. For example, add it to a trifocal, add it, as you said, to a hybrid uh, 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 EDOF. Now, what's the a hybrid EDOF. Now, hybrid EDOF, it's a diffractive or refractive, added to it a negative spherical abrasion to reduce the effect of dysphotopsia by reducing the thickness of the uh, uh, refractive or the number of the rings and the distance of the rings in diffract. And that's what we have it in symphony, in, in, uh, in eye hands, or sorry in, in sorry in symphony and the other lens from uh, johnson and johnson and the lucidus now the the aim of them is that to enable the synergy. The patient, yeah the uh, synergy yes exactly synergy, yes. synergy is better than symphony by adding more ring to the to the plate so in this situation they are enable the patient to see better reading, but less uh, dysphotopsia. Mm -hmm. But yes. in until now, the synergy, they didn't announce what's the adding to the near, which is around less than two diopter, unfortunately. And from this point of view, if you will go to the, to the, the, the refractive and uh, uh, negative spherical abrasion, which is in Lucidus and some companies from uh, uh, Switzerland, it add, it gives three diopter at the lens level, uh, which is 2.5 diopter of the cornea. Because any power at the lens level, when you are, when you need this power at the cornea, it will be deducted around 0.5. And this will give you 2.5. So till now, practically, I, I use them all and uh, and many patients, I feel that Lucidus with micro, micro monovision is the best if you need to use Lucidus alone in both eyes. Now, what's the new Thanks. in diffractive? Just one comment. The new in diffractive is a new technology called sinusoidal. 
Now, playing with the diffractive, the spike, the, the spike of it, and the way yes. of the difference between, or the way of the distance between the rings, that's what we call sinusitis, it's just like sinusitis, just like what present in our sinus. And that's what they will, uh, um, promising that it's the, 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 the photopsia will be less, but one study shows that the reading is also less comparing to the okay. other. Yes, thank you for highlighting this because the, the, the sinusoid, the, the height of the, the height of the ring Exactly. And the spacing and the de okay. and the base de uh, the base uh, wideness is yeah. uh, is uh, they are playing in this now exactly. to decrease of so they are increasing the entrance of the light but yes. still unfortunately yes. not to prove that the near is the same as the near okay. of the other yeah. thank you Th thank you so much to Kusafwan so uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Dr Sandeep Mitra uh, he is going to talk about uh, Prisby uh, Yant Bayon. Uh, Prisbyan. Prisbyan. Prisbyan, yes. yes. And uh, Dr. Sandeep Mitra, he's a consultant ophthalmologist at the Zahra Hospital, uh, Dubai uh, uh, Emirates. Uh, please, Dr. Sandeep. Yeah, um, uh, thank you, Dr. Ashraf. Thank you, Dr. Safwan. Uh, it was a very interesting talk. Uh, let me just see. Can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, your, your screen is very clear. Okay. Uh, you are ready for those. the match, the, Dr. Dr. Sandeep? Uh, Brazil lost. Uh, Brazil, Brazil lost. Won. Wow. Yes. Uh, I, I don't penalty. know what happened. Penalty lost. Penalty lost. Okay. They reached the penalty. That's good. Okay. Just one second. I think. No, take your time, see. Dr. Sandeep. I uh, cannot see the. My this thing is got stuck. You can exit from the ah, uh, okay. Just one second. Okay, just one minute. I need to reduce you guys here. Okay. All right. So I'm all set now. Okay, so a laser blended vision correction or press biome is uh type of uh, press biopic correction, which is uh, designed and devised by Zeiss uh, Meditech in Germany, and uh, it's well understood. So uh, way back in 1991, uh, Carl Zeiss Meditech actually started the initial uh, profile, which was uh, near vision, which was designed on the top of the cornea, and the distant vision was the rest of the cornea. So this was the initial uh, laser uh, map which they had started which really did not work very well and then they started doing a multifocal ablation which was uh, by Avalos and Agarwal in 1992 uh, wherein the central profile was for distance and the peripheral part was uh, uh, for the near vision so this was started and then this also did not work very well and there was a lot of uh, problem with this profile. Subsequently, in 2001, VSAC came with uh, a different profile, which is called the, uh, the multiform, multiform uh, focal ablation, wherein, again, the near vision was in the center and the periphery uh, was for the far vision. So these are the various attempts and modification over time, which was done for uh, a multifocal approach to cornea. And of course, we have already talked about the lenses. Uh, now, coming to press beyond uh, or laser blended vision, as we call it, there are a few things we need to take care of. First is a pre-operative testing protocol is very strict for these patients. A very nice manifest refraction is required. Uh, then comes the dominance testing. Uh, we can we cannot proceed with this treatment until unless we can prove that there is a clear cut dominance between the eyes. After we have tested dominance, then comes the laser blended vision tolerance assessment. I will explain each of them one by one. And then what myopic target to expect in each patient. That also is varied. And after we have done all this uh, permutation combination, then comes the laser vision explanation to the patient and counseling. So these are the cornerstones of uh, 
laser blended vision. Then after we have done the surgery, then we look into post-operative evaluation of these patients, post-operative visual course. Of course, it's, uh, it's not perfect vision the day after the surgery. So they have to be explained that there is a uh, adaptation period after the presbyon treatment is given. And of course, clause blur, blur management and final outcome. Uh, so the first uh, pre-operative testing protocol is the history and motivation for the surgery. So patient has to be told clearly that, look, uh, if you are going for a press biopic surgery, it is not a 100% proven uh, result. So you will have to have understand what exactly you are going for. Uh, if a patient has used contact lenses of, uh, as a monovision, uh, these patients are actually a better candidate. And of course, each of them should be away from dry eye. So you should not select patients with dry eye. Now, the most important thing is ocular dominance. And uh, we use these four methods to check for dominance. One is the preferred sighting by a used camera or a disposable camera, uh, shooting simulation, then uh, a viewfinder hole test, uh, and, a and a pointing with the finger or, or a distant object. Then comes the pupillary reaction. It's very important to see that the pupil size is not irregular in between the eyes, and it is not a, a very large dilated pupil. So pupil size in scotopic and photopic is very important. There should not be any afferent pupillary defect. Ocular motility also should be tested, and there should not be any ocular motility problem in these patients. Um, you ideally should have a field test done as well to check for the binocular field of vision. Both monocular and binocular activity for distance and intermediate should be assessed. Um, OCT is very important in these patients, and especially epithelial pachymetry. Uh, monocular distance acuity with plus 1.5 blur in the non-dominant eye is checked in each and every patient. And of course, tear breakup time, uh, the slit lamp, Schirmer's test, intraocular pressure. And in every patient, you must ask a night vision questionnaire. If the patient tells you that the night vision, he has a problem, these patients really don't do well with cornea surgery, especially for press biopia, because uh, any form of press biopic treatment can distort night vision. So you have to be careful if the patient has night vision problem, it's better to avoid uh, press biopic treatment in these patients. Um, coming to manifest refraction is very important to refine your refraction with plus and minus uh, cross cylinder. Then you also do a binocular balance by adding 1.5 over a non-dominant eye. Uh, the dominance test, which I explained to you before, one of them is you can have a one inch hole in an A4 page and keep it at an arm's length in a landscape format in a, in a white paper. And then you can ask, uh, alternately cover one eye and the other eye and look at a object which is about uh, a six meter away the tolerance test this again is very important the it's like the examiner stands in front of the patient blocking his visual acuity for distance uh, and retinoscopy and plus 1.5 is uh, placed in the non-dominant eye then the examiner moves away and asks, how does it look if the patient says it's fine there's no ghosting and nothing strange that means this is a, a patient who is well tolerating then you bring the near vision chart, chart in front of the patient and move it closer to 40 centimeter and the patient is, read, is able to read the smallest letter. Uh, then you know the patient is well tolerant to laser blended vision. Uh, you can do examiner covers the dominant eye and ask about the blur with a non-dominant eye. If the patient says that he is not aware of the blur of the non-dominant eye, then both eyes are open and the patient is fully tolerant. If not, record the amount of blood, cross blood. You can also try and put this plus 1.5 on the dominant eye and again check it, uh, whether the cross blur is present or not. Now, if you are going to do a press biopic treatment, which is a micro monovision treatment, you can give a contact lens trial. So if you can just give a 1.5 diopter or non-dominant non eye contact lens and see if the acceptance is up to 60%, some of these patients will go ahead and tolerate micro monovision. So, uh, whereas in a laser blended vision, we know that the 
the the tolerance level is up to 97 percent which is much higher than contact lens tolerance so we know that if a patient is tolerant to contact lens monovision most of these patients will be tolerant to laser blended vision so what is laser blended vision it's basically a, a profile which is a non-linear aspheric profile which increases the depth of focus it also works on negative spherical aberration so basically what the profile does it increases the negative spherical aberration and also it increases the depth of focus so this is what it is so in the dominant eye the person is corrected for distance and the non-dominant eye the person is corrected for near and these two blends in an intermediate zone so the profile is made in such a way that both eyes neither the patient sees very clear distance nor he sees very clear near but with both eyes together, he is focused more towards the intermediate, far and near. So it's some sort of a micro monovision, but not exactly micro monovision. What else is required for a good laser blended vision or press bion uh, result is called the neural summation of information. So when you do this, that you correct the non dominant eye for near and the dominant eye for distance there is the brain actually adapts to this mechanism this is called neural summation so that's why it takes little time for the patients to adjust to this mechanism also there is an increase in depth of focus and it also has it produces a negative spherical aberration so uh, these are the results produced uh, and published by dr uh, professor dan ranstein in uk and he did a prospective study in patients uh, wherein the spherical equivalent was minus 8.5 and the cylinder range uh, with three diopters and hyperopia of patients up to uh, plus 5.75 and cylinder of minus 3.25. And he found that uh, myopic binocular vision was present after um, a laser blended in about 98.5 and they all they could read up to J5 in uh, most of the patients and in hyperopic again it was uh, 2020 vision and j5 in 94.5 percent of uh, the patients so uh, what what is the uh, what is the neural summation in, in laser blended vision so now that's the most important thing because it the patient has to understand that this is not a perfect correction so neither you can see far very clear, nor you can see near very clear, but with both eyes together, there is an overall intermediate vision, which is very good. And then the patient is actually trying to adapt between distance and near. So they have to be explained. So they should not keep checking their right eye and left eye. If you have done this treatment, they should allow the brain to adapt to this concept of micro monovision. So what happens if you are myopic, or if you are hyperopic or if you are emetropic. Now, in a myopic patient, when you do a laser blended vision, they usually tend to get a very good distant vision. However, the near vision is not as good. And they might complain initially that they are slightly uh, having a blur, which you should not do anything. Because if you leave them over a few, uh, a few weeks, you find the near vision gets clearer and clearer and they are, they are able to adopt. Whereas in a hyperopic patient or emetropic patients, the distant vision may be slightly blur to start with because of overcorrection. And that again improves with time, whereas they have a very good near vision to start with, which might fade away with time. So this is something we should explain to each and every patient, whether he's myopic, hyperopic, or emetropic, what is the expectation after a laser blended vision correction? Now, there are three stages of recovery when you do any form of uh, press bion treatment. Now, if in the day one, there will be slight discomfort of any LASIK patients. There is a dry eye sensation. There is a night vision halos. So they will have some difficulty in driving. Slight blurring is there. Visual fluctuations are there. And it settles down within the first week. Now, after the first week, the visual fluctuations gets better and better and the patient gets both night vision and day vision gets better. And after three to four months, the concept of laser blended is much more comfortable for the patient and they, they stop coming. The interim period between the time you have done the surgery 
to the period they're adopting, you can tell the patient, look, you may have to use some radiant glasses uh, for myopia or for a hyperopic patient. You might just tell him, look, you might have to use some distant glasses. So this is an adaptation phase, and then you explain to the patient, they adapt to that uh, very nicely. So in, in summation, I must tell you that we are not still, we are still fighting to get the best result and best profile for press biopia as far as the cornea uh, profile treatment is concerned. I know there are other speakers who are going to talk about it, but uh, in my hands, I have been doing laser bended vision for last, maybe in from 2011, so it's been quite some time. Uh, I have patients who are very happy with it. I have patients, they are not at all happy and then just they go and uh, we have to retreat them over time. But most uh, most of the, my patients, they do, they, they are okay they, if the patient selection is good. So my uh, recommendation is select your patients before offering the treatment. Otherwise, they will be a uh, trouble for you and they will never be happy for whatever result. So customize your patient based on need. And especially if you are going to do a press biopic treatment, you must be sure that these patients don't have any form of lenticular issue because if they have lenticular issue it's better not to attempt and go ahead with corneal corneal surgery thank you thank you dr sandeep uh, very nice uh, explanation how this beyond uh, and blended vision works i think many uh, many audience will understand now what's blended vision uh, dr usama uh, can can you uh, do you have any question for dr sandeep no, thank you very Dr. Sandeep for that. It's really, it's it's very good technique, but this, there's also with any laser correction for this biopsy, there's always limitation. One of the limitation also, by the way, the laser machine, not everyone using Zeiss. So you have to use this software and there's different machines that have different software. I think there's different, there, there's some similarity, but there's, so this is just specifically for Zeiss, but there's another machines, they do close by and there's well, that's big limitation as far as I'm concerned. But I think that if someone is still, there's no cataract, I think is a good option for a patient between 40 to 55. Maybe that's a good option for this age range. Uh, Dr. Doctor, Sandeep. Doctor. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Sandeep. Doctor I, it was a very nice um, presentation for uh, Pres, Pres Bayon. I think that for me, I, 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 have, I had the chance to use them both, but I need to ask Dr. Sandeep, What's the upper limit of ad that you can add it in this software? Uh, you, you, actually, the software allows you to add plus 1.5. That's the max. If you are going to add more than plus 1.5, the software actually will tell you that you're leaving the, the usual nomogram. So yeah. the nomograms are designed for plus 1.5. You can go down. So you can make it plus 1. You can make it plus 0.75. But if you want to exceed plus 1.5, the nomogram will give you a warning. Look, yes. you're doing, you're of your own. So what yeah. is the result? We don't know. So in my cases, I don't go beyond 1.5. So that is yeah. the limit. Exactly. So 100% no. uh, according to this limitation, I'm, I'm asking you, and I know that this, this is limitation, but uh, uh, we know that, that the variation in the need for the patient according to their age and when we are reaching to 47, 46, or 48, then we will be in need for more than 1.5. So that's we need to manipulate. And I think that the machine, uh, most of them, they are not allowing you to, to go beyond 1.5. Anyway, uh, it was a very nice presentation, uh, Dr. Sandy. Yes, Dr. Dr. Khaled, Dr. Khaled yeah. do you have any question or Dr. Osama? Uh, just for Dr. Sandy, do you have any patient where you have contact lens? Uh, trial and he's happy and you did uh, 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 laser and he wasn't happy? No, thank God I didn't have one, but uh, I, I think you can have. Uh, that's that's a possibility. Yeah, I mean, there are so many varied things happens, but did not happen that much. Uh, I really don't, uh, uh, once you see the dominance and you know that the patient is tolerant to whatever manifest refraction, until this patient really asks for a contract lens tolerance, I didn't, don't do it. Because uh, to be frank, I, 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 as I showed it to you in the slides and Dr. Professor Einstein's thing that contact lens tolerance is only about 60 to 70%. Whereas in press bion, yeah. it's much more, much more than that. So it, it really doesn't equate to each other. 
but I don't know. I mean, in my hands, it never happened, but it can happen. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not very really sure about it. Yeah, you are Last using question, the trifocal. Yeah, trifocal uh, contact lens or monofocal uh, contact lens. No, no, no monofocal contact lens. Monovision mono, contact lens. Monovision yes. contact. Yes, yes, monovision. Just monovision. Keep monovision. Doctors, yeah. Dr. Sandeep, last question. Uh, if, you, if, if you are going to retreat these patients, uh, what's your parameters? Yeah, so the main reason for retreating them is like, for example, hyperopic patients, their effect of near goes down with time. So these are the patients we retreat mostly. Myopes usually don't require retreatment. They're happy with it because it tends to regress a little bit. So they, they are actually reading improves with time. So it's very, uh, you should be very reluctant to retreat myopes. But hyperopes, yes, you may have to treat them. So you might have to refine their, uh, their near vision again. And your parameters, do you decrease the zone or you don't decrease the zone? No, 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 no. We don't change the zone. No, no we don't change the zone. The zone. No. Sorry, no. question. This is the same thing as Dr. Sandeep. Do you go to use the bris beyond? in the top up or you just corrected a bit of refractive error to boost it so you're going to add it you measure the q value spheric aberration and then adjust it what you're going to do or you mainly yes. target the refractive error that time so the press bound software does not allow you to do retreatment so you cannot use the press bound again for the second retreatment so the retreatment will be purely done on refractive error so you check how much refractive error you are you're going to target and you just do retreatment. So your your whole concept of press bound is only a virgin treatment. You cannot do another press bound on a press bound. So the software but actually doesn't allow a, that. Yeah, I know, but it's gonna be if you someone measure the school calibration and uh, target if there is no much effect of the press bound. It can be technical, but I know there's a challenge and limitation of the program. Yeah. Uh yes, I mean technically yes, you're right. It's possible. Yeah. But whether, but when you put this in a press bound software again, like for yeah. example, you it, it it actually tells you there is no nothing like that that you have a re done a surgery and you are doing a resurgery. It does not allow. So you can do it. If you want to? Well, okay. Because <laughs> so because we, we are going to move yeah to move to the yeah. next uh, uh, talk. Uh, yeah, another way to treat uh, presbyopia on the cornea level. Uh, which is Presby Max. Uh, Dr. Safwan al Bayati is going to, to make it clear what's Presby Max and uh, how we can start uh, Presby Max. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Safwan. And um, I'm very glad to, to, to be invited for, for this and part of this with this eminent speakers, Dr. Sandeep, Dr. Khalid, you, and uh, with this uh, interesting subject. So, uh, uh, I think that uh, we are uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, some challenges in the in this subject. But uh, when we are talking about la laser base and what's the limitation for the laser base, I do agree fully that selection of the patient is one of the key factor here, as Dr. Sandeep started, and identification of the prominent with the non-prominent is the second uh, key factor for those patients that they have any uh, uh, sorts of disease that can affect the cataract. Addition to that, I'm adding, and especially in, my, in this software that I will discuss it, and, and I don't have any, unfortunately, any uh, financial uh, uh, enclosure with it, that uh, those patients that they are not wearing sunglasses also, we, we need to avoid them because they will not have a distance, good distance vision outdoor. So from this selection of the patient, we will start our uh, uh, my presentation. As I said, and as all the other uh, speakers say, that presbyopia is a physiological progressive disability for near uh, vision. Dr. Sfon, can we enlarge the, the picture, please? The full. Oh, okay. The full, uh... Sorry. Sorry for that. So uh, uh, as we said, that the uh, presbyopia is a physiological progressive disability for near vision. The Prismimax precisely and, and definitely uh, uh, Sandeep, he talk about some sort of uh, 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 negative spherical calibration in both, but Prismimax, it's a new era in laser correction of presbyopia has begun with the Prismimax by its we can treat emetropic as well as myopic and hyperopic and astigmatic patient who's 
accommodative ability are limited. Uncorrected visual acuity become possible. It creates what we call, as uh, Sandeep said, biaspheric multifocal ablation, aspheric optical uh, 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 optimization of the corneal area for both eyes, for near vision, not only one, not only the non-dominant, for both. And the mid-peripheral cornea for far vision uh, for each patient's eye. Bilateral treatment, it enlarge the depth of focus and minimize contrast loss. Patient can obtain satisfactory vision for wide distance range. And you can see on the right side of the presentation, the profile of the laser by inducing a negative spherical abrasion of a power unlimited in the center. We, I, can, I can reach up to plus three diopter or up to uh, three equivalent diopter for the negative spherical abrasion. And uh, uh, you are just measuring the center and the software will put it will put the power equivalent to the mid periphery and the power that you you need it for the periphery for the spherical correction so each concentric area is multifocal with the transition between both providing intermediate vision now so this is the the uh, uh, the profile exactly where we have central, intermediate, and peripheral. So similar to the principle of multifocal contact lenses of refractive multifocal uh, and, uh, or refractive multifocal intraocular lens. Prisby Max create a multifocal corneal surface. And this is again, how, how as I said, that the, the, the central area for the near, and the mid periphery for the intermediate with the power according to the power that we selected for the uh, central area compensate to the intermediate and then the, the 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 sphere or the distance or the refractive correction will be in the periphery and that what extend the depth of focus and here someone will ask say i said in the lens base we cannot reach up more than 1.5 uh, as a spherical abrasion. So why in the cornea we can reach up to three? That's because the uh, when we are putting the spherical negative spherical abrasion of the cornea in the cornea, this will not create uh, uh, a dysphotopsia or the dysphotopsia that will be created is as the 1.5 diopter in the uh, in the lens base, and that's very important issues when we are treating the uh, uh, patient with a presbyopia because we might treat patient at age of 50 and that patient need around 2.25 or 2.5. Here, we are able to treat it. Now, in what the patient will be seen here, he will be seen afar at six meter and far intermediate 1.5 meter and intermediate 70 centimeter and near 40 centimeter. It's 90% of the vision. That's what we are in all. I, I do agree with all uh, discussion that done that counseling of the patient is one of the important issues. And when we are seeing now, we, we are I'm coming in the discussion, uh, these issues that the patient should have the what we call uh, 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 compensation for the distance and near means that there is no perfect distance, there is no perfect near. So if he agreed, then we will go through. And in this software, trifocal test is one of the important issues. So when uh, Dr. Khaled Arfaj say that uh, we need to select, yes, we need to select the patient. Which patient with positive thinking preoperatively? Uh, well, do we have those patients? Well, uh, hopefully, I think that Sandeep, he has the ability to select better than me because he's always saying that he has the mentality to, to reach the uh, patient's mentality. Well, me, I'm trying uh, swing that reduced distance vision postoperatively may occur from corrective distance vision pre-op versus uncorrected distance uh, vision post-op. Uh, Dr. Ashraf, the, the presentation is clear.
دكتور اشرف يا يا اتس فيري كلير most satisfied patient they are hyper then high astigmatism then high myop then emetrop then low myop so i'm very careful when when i'm i'm dealing with the low myop minus 2 minus 1 they are they have a very uh, um, a satisfied near vision which i called it golden near vision so i'm always telling them that See, I will correct the distance, but your golden near vision, I cannot reach. So I, I, I can reach to copper level. Uh, but uh, uh, if you are not uh, aware by using the definitely trifocal uh, contact lens, if they are not happy, then that's all. But hyperopic, they will be happy. High astigmatic, high astigmatic patient and high myop patient, that most of them, they are happy. Try with multifocal contact lens prior to surgery. It's a crucial in this software. So patient may need additive sunglasses. Exactly. Why? Because we are treating the central area of the cornea and that central area of the cornea, it uh, 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 goes with the optical zone. So means that the optical zone of the patient that have, for example, 6.5 diameter, the Central area is 2.5. So that 2.5, if the patient not wearing sunglasses and his pupil on outdoor reach to 2.5 or less, then the distance vision 100%, it will be involved and affected. That's why a uh, few patients, when we start this software, especially in, in, in our area where the sun, sun is 300, 360 days outdoor, and they are not wearing sunglasses, they were suffering from uh, blurred uh, distance vision. So uh, I made a few uh, a modification in the optical zone. So I uh, uh, reducing the outer optical zone. So the, the near optical zone is reduced. That's right, it's affecting the, the performance of the near, but uh, by adding more near, it, we could uh, compensate and uh, their distance vision start to be better. So outdoor sunglasses are required for distance and sunny day. Indoor glasses for distance are not required. Indoor stronger lighter are uh, beneficial for near performance for sure. For working short, shorter distance than 40 centimeter or longer period of time extra addition, reading glasses is still needed. So they need to know that sometimes they are need for a reading glass, especially when they need, they need to read the leaflet of the medication. And that's, that's uh, really annoying me when the patient's coming saying that I'm not reading. Uh, I said, what do you need to read? Because I test you for reading. He said, no, you know that I tried to read the leaflets of the drugs and I couldn't. I said that with my glasses that is 2.75, I am not able to read the leaflet. So they need to know what's the, uh, capability of this software. So it's for the messages for the reading, reading in, in, in the phone with a, a font that it should be enlarged, the illumination is required. And for long distance driving spectacles for distance, like for example, if he has a minus 0.5, because we are sometimes putting it a minus 0.5 in, in the non-dominant eye could be more convenient. Compensating the residual myopic refraction. But in my uh, uh, practice, I, I was not in need for uh, any distance re uh, driving re uh, glasses. Now, what we have an options? We have four options for the patient. Like in, in 2009, it was a type of Prisbimax symmetrical, means that uh, we are not identifying which eye is predominant or non-dominant. So we are applying, we were applying uh, the uh, spherical abrasion on both uh, symmetrically. And we end up with the difficulties with uh, distance vision. But 2012, they came with a new software called Micromonovision, where uh, 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 the, dis the dominant have better distance vision with the with the uh, less power of the add comparing to the add of the near but no refractive 
difference means that the difference here when we are talking micro mono the difference is in the ad not in the refractive correction when we, we reach uh, 12 13 then Prism, Prism max hybrid appeared and when hybrid appeared it shows that there is a two difference in uh, here we are we are doing two different things in the uh, uh, co comparing between the dominant and non-dominant. In dominant, we are putting less add and we are targeting the optimum refractive error. In non-dominant, we are putting more add, like for example, if I need to, if the, if the add requested of the patient is uh, plus two. So I'm, I'm putting this plus two or 2.25 on the and non-dominant eye, but in the dominant eye, I will put plus one. So he will have around 30% in the dominant for reading and, and more than 90% for distance. But compared to the non-dominant, where I, where I would put full near and I'm targeting minus 0 0.75. So here he will have a better reading, but still have ability to reach the distance in about 70% or 60%, 60 to 70%. Now, that's actually what I like, and that's what I'm doing now, uh, uh, currently. I like the hybrid, especially. In the hybrid, I can start from 40 up to 50, from 40 years old patient up to 50, because in 40 years old, we cannot add, uh, like for example, 0.75 or or one, and then after two years, the patient will come, or less than one, two years. One year, the patient's coming, uh, saying that, well, I, I lost my ability to read because he, he started to progress. And the progression, as all we know, from 40 to 47, it's uh, yearly by more than 0.5. So I like the hybrid because in hybrid, I can add plus two and the, and the patient distance vision in the, uh, the non-dominant, and I can add only plus one that is required for the dominant. In, in, in non-dominant eye will not affect the distance vision because the dominant eye being corrected perfectly for distance. So for this type of the treatment among those four types is one of the favorite for me personally. In 16, we uh, create the, 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 the creation of monocular vision, Prisby Max monocular vision here, uh, the the uh, the ad is uh, change uh, in between the dominant and non-dominant, and the full refractive error change as a as a mono monovision means that here we have the dominant hundred percent is uh, uh, for distance, but near the ad there is ad it's just like the uh, uh, software of uh, Presbyon. So. Trial with multifocal contact lens prior to surgery, center for near peripheral for distance. It's a very crucial for, for, for this software. Prisby Max symmetric uh, target for distance. And that's all is that what, what I discussed in the, in the uh, previous slide. So here, this diagram shows uh, in uh, Prisby Max uh, symmetric, uh, where it shows that the, the dominant and non-dominant, it gives both distance and near, and we were facing some limitation in the distance vision, and it need more neural adaptation. In micro monovision, it shows that the dominant having better distance vision and the non-dominant, it has some limitation in the distance, but near is much better the dom than dominant. In hybrid, the dominant has a near and uh, uh, distance, but uh, but near is less than non-dominant, where it has less distance and more near. And in monocular, definitely the dominant has only the distance and the non-dominant having the near. Now, uh, these inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria, I think that all our colleagues, uh, they pass through it and uh, uh, through all the tests, for the, we are starting from the uh, identifying the dominant from the non-dominant and the trifocal contact lens. And we are seeing that how the patient 
uh, 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 work with the, with this tripocality uh, lens, and the, uh, we are putting for it for for the patient and leave him for uh, 24 hours. So he will drive and day and night and uh, and read and uh, do all his activities um, among any difficulties that he will uh, uh, face it. We uh, whether we will be able to correct it or not. Uh, these are all we will discuss it again after the after returning back the patient. So these are very important points for us, and definitely we are excluding all the patient from uh, whether diabetic that they are not wearing sunglasses, uh, family history of early cataract, any changes in the in the lens, and changes that prevent us from treat because we are treating abrasion free, so we cannot treat any. Uh, a, a pre-existing high order abrasions like uh, a high coma especially if it is uh, uh, not vertical transverse so all those patients being excluded and uh, uh, as we said that all decisions is, is made um, on uh, the, uh, the uh, starting with the anisometropic tolerance more than one I think that uh, dr Sandeep uh, he he discuss it all, so I will not uh, uh, go through. But important issues is that when a scotopic pupil is more than uh, uh, four point five, those they are excluded. Topographic photopic pupil uh, between uh, two point five, three point five, uh, and acceptance of increased rec uh, recovery time and distance for uh, better uh, stereopsis. Uh, uh, those patients, especially in 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 uh, hybrid and uh, micro monovision, so we are highlighting them and uh, uh, discussing with them uh, that the neural adaptation within the first one month it's an important issue to accept the uh, distance blurness that it will be because the near it will be an immediate effect. The near non dominant eye approach. Uh, is in all uh, Prisby, Prisby type uh, the, the same. The difference exists in the distance dominant eye include either 100% like micro monovision, 50% hybrid, or zero in monocular intended multifocality. So the dominant either it has 100% add or 50% like in hybrid add, or 0% in monocular, like, for example, the same uh, presbyome. Now, that's the, the profile of the, uh, uh, of the laser machine and how we are adding. If you will go to the left side, you can see that the manifest, and definitely we are doing for all patient uh, cyclopentylate uh, uh, assessment, because most of them, they might have some hidden uh, hyperopic shift, especially for those hyperopic. And we can see up in the, uh, unfortunately that I cannot use my uh, uh, arrow, uh, the presbyopic info, the, so the distance eye, uh, the dominant eye here is the right eye. Uh, presbyopic addition is the, like, let us say, for example, I add 2.5 and the other eye, it will be uh, uh, the uh, non-dominant eye. Here, the options up on the, on the right side, up, it will uh, show you the, uh, presbyopic hybrid or micro monovision. Uh, uh, so here I can select between them and the software will, will select the ad uh, for uh, each eye. Like for example, as far as that I select the dominant eye, so the ad for the dominant eye will be 50% and the, uh, the ad for the non-dominant eye will be the full ad that I put. And this is the profile of the laser, how it will appear post. And you can, we can see that the central area, uh, it's treated in, uh, totally different than the periphery and creating a negative spherical abrasion in the center. And if we will, if anyone have any, any experience with this software, you can see that in summary of abrasion, the spherical abrasion here, the, there is a treatment of uh, 0.03 of micrometer for coma, trefoil zero and spherical abrasion uh, one, uh, micro um, uh, uh, equivalent diopter, and the, the the refraction it's on the lower uh, left side. We can see I I put one point five one point seven five 
uh, diopter, hyperopic, and minus 0.5, but the add here is 2.5. And that's for the other eye where the, the uh, eye select, uh, for example, uh, here it, uh, uh, it's um, uh, uh, symmetric just to show the add for both. And this is the topography post op showing the area of pseudo uh, uh, keratoconic or pseudo keratoconic, pseudo uh, keratoconic appearance, but it's a central uh, uh, presbyopic treatment where it shows the uh, negative spherical abrasion in the center. That's for the other eye. And the depth of it is according to the dominant or non dominant. I think that here, for example, the distance I, how it's appear, how, how, how shows the, the high, here I'm, I'm selecting the hybrid in the new software. And as I said, that 1.75 for a distance means that it's 50% of its, and the target for the uh, post refractive means the post op is zero, but comparing to the non dominant I, and the non-dominant eye, the target, our target, it's uh, minus uh, 0.89. Uh, so the laser will be uh, uh, added to um, the refraction of the patient to have the target of minus 0.89. And uh, addition to that, the add will be for the dominant 50%, the non-dominant full. And this is the uh, result after all. After all in the profile of the of the laser that's that was this for dominant this is for non-dominant and then that's the uh, uh, result this is this and this uh, diagram shows the comparison between the prisby max multi multifocal iol and q lasik and comra inlay the binocularity, the added degree is in, in Prisby Max, we can add 2.5, uh, multifocal 2.5, and Q LASIK plus 1.5, and Comra plus 1, and uh, Prisbion is 1.5. Reversibility, because there was a, a question of can we add, but no one asked, can we remove? The answer is yes. Uh, in, in, uh, in Prisby Max, we can remove the whole negative spherical abrasion, and in multifocal IOL, Q LASIK, and Comra, all it's reversible. Night symptoms, uh, it's appear in Prisby Max and multifocal, but Q LASIK uh, not, and Comra no. Uh, percentage of reading with the glasses in uh, Prisby Max, there is one plus, and multifocal IOL one plus, Q LASIK two plus, and Comra two plus. Centration to the visual axis, it's needed in all. Great thanks for all. And I'm very sorry to extend my time. Sorry to be late. Thank you, yes, Dr. Safwan. It was a very nice presentation. I like Prisby Max and I have um, uh, some experience uh, with yeah. Prisby Max uh, since uh, 2009 uh, yeah. till 2014. Then I changed to lens base and I stopped uh, cornea. Ah, okay. uh, Good. Yeah. <laughs> now the issue that, that, uh, the, the promising issues is that now we have, as I said before, that as far as that we are using the aid of lens pure. Now for those patients that they develop cataract and we have the record for them and we are we can measure the the degree of spherical abrasion that remain in the cornea. We can add a pure uh, aid of lens to them, and that pure aid of lens should have a negative spherical abrasion, not a positive spherical abrasion, because some of the id of lens having positive spherical abrasion, like th those coming from Rayner. Uh, so we, we don't need to use that. If, if we have a Prisby Max a treat, treatment, if we add a negative spherical abrasion on the lens to the negative spherical abrasion that done on the cornea, we will have a very good near vision and distance vision for those patients. Yes, I, I was I was always uh, for, uh, adding for the uh, calculation of the machine 0.75 for most of my patients, and mm -hmm. I didn't do uh, at that time a patient uh, uh, before the age of 50. All yeah. my patient was 50 plus, and yeah. it was uh, the emetropes and hypermetropes. I didn't use this technology with, with my ops. Yeah. Uh, so most of them who I uh, 
categorized to do this, it was they are were okay. Uh, we have very nice question. I think yeah. this is from Algeria. Okay. Uh, they ask it after laser treatment. Okay. If patient had cataract, yeah. what kind of IOL we are going to recommend? That's, so we I are was, going to just repeating and repeating. Yeah. Yes, we are going to 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 divide the laser refractive cornea either normal laser, monocular laser, or uh, presbyopic corneal treatment. So yeah. what type of IOL we are going to choose, Dr. Osama and Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Osama? Let's uh, leave it to uh, Anyway, I think is if someone, uh, if someone have you after presbyont or uh, any laser refractive procedure, uh, some people advocate that even you can use monovision because it still have the same effect in the cornea. Yeah. But technically, it's always a challenge when you had, for normal LASIK, just a laser procedure, you need to see how much the high order aberration and how much the centration treatment of the zone so you need to and dryness eye so all factors to to include it so and the, also the formula you have to use the multi formula uh, to get the right target so you have the target of refraction both lasik the other thing is what option of lens to do, use the easiest way for this patient to have a monofocal but with monovision option but yeah. you can if it's very not high refractive error treatment you can go for it off the trifocal, the one is that you are you go into more risk of night vision and quality problems. So if you want to go, go for ADOF, or maybe easy if you go for monofocal, but make sure that you assess the patient well and you need the right formula to you need to target the refractive error also. Okay. If we, if you are going to uh, look for the monofocal, uh, how uh, how we are going to choose between zero abraded IOLs? Negative IOLs and positive IOLs. Yeah, that's a very yeah. good question because uh, we were using, and, and definitely before Edof, I was using the spheric, not aspheric, because if you use aspheric, it will deduct from the spherical abrasion that you create. So it needs to be spheric. But now, as far as that, we have a pure Edof, it's, the, 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 يعني, it's for sure that we need to use the pure Edof. Why? Because Presbyopic laser treatment is not suitable for pseudophagic, which means that the pseudophagic patients that, because we don't know the nature of the lens that is there, whether aspheric or spheric, and when we add, and I try it with, with the many, with the few patients, that they were not happy with, with it, because it, it adds to the near, but it's not give them, يعني, it gives them an intermediate vision in a good way, but the near is not. That's why I'm saying, EDOF is the solution for those that they need to maintain their near vision. Uh, uh, because EDOF, it will give them around one diopter at the corneal level. And the, and the presbyopic treatment that we did, especially if we, are, if we did it by ourselves, it means that the record, full record there, and we know the amount of the spherical abrasion that we done. So it will give them from 2 to 2.5 at the corneal level, which I consider is a, is a good uh, they, they they will have a, a, a good uh, uh, near vision. I have another question for Dr. Osama, Dr. Khalig al Arfa, and Dr. Safwan. Uh, when we choose a type of IOL, either um, the hybrid mono, uh, EDOF lenses or the trifocal, do we consider the corneal uh, keratometry, either steep cornea or flat cornea? And what do you mean by steep cornea or flat if cornea? You have, yes, if you have a cornea more, a steep more than 48, and if you yeah. have a flat cornea less than 40, and yeah. the patient asking for a presbyopic treatment uh, on the lens space, yeah. do you go for this or not? And we con definitely we consider that above 48 is a normal cornea, it's not keratoconic. Yeah, normal. It's normal cornea. Yeah. Normal Here, cornea. Yeah, normal cornea 48 and 40 for me, it's it's considered as a part of the of the issue. So I can go through if the high order abrasion is not there. The the key is in the high order abrasion. When we have a high uh, transverse cornea or horizontal cornea, sorry, and when we have a spherical abrasion that high, those limitations. So the total corneal abrasion it should not be above 0.5 equivalent diopter especially the comma that it should not be above 
three or point uh, for me point five if it is vertical. So uh, the K reading, I don't think so that it's a limitation for except if post refractive patient that have hyperopic post refractive and the K reading is not above forty eight. Well, I can consider an EDOF lens for him, but those that normal cornea the k reading is not a normal cornea because normal cornea here we are talking about 40 and 48 so uh, the range okay. of 40 and 48 uh, uh, k reading is not a limitation for uh, trifocality the high order okay. region is a limitation okay my 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 last question to dr safwan dr Osama. what is the percentage of your patients need a prespiofic treatment if you have a 100 patient What's your percentage in your clinic and Dr. Hussein? So let For us me, start. I don't use it now. Uh, I expose different. That's what I mean about the machines, okay? So you don't going to buy. I had Schwinn before. I've used this uh, before, but now we don't have Icon. I don't use it for bisbiopic. Before also, by the way, I had a Bushelom. I used a Subra core for some patients, which also can yeah. give a, also a good um, uh, yeah. LASIK procedure, bisbiopic uh, LASIK. As a subraco, which is different modality, yeah. but it's really what option, what laser you had may affect you what percentage you're going to do. But now we have yeah. icon. I don't do the prescribable with icon really. Mm -hmm. No, so I mean, I mean, in your in your in your clinic, uh, uh, how uh, laser, what is what the I percentage, mean? whatever laser or lens space? What no, is the percentage but, of no, your patient that, asking for free treatment? No, that's for completely me, different because, yeah, I'll yeah. leave it to Safwan about laser, pure laser. I think it's better to ask about pure laser, how much prespiobic yeah, age, but they have laser. How much percentage you go for prespiobic well, treatment? Well, for laser side, is less than 30%. Uh -huh. But for lens okay. base, is more than 50%. So okay. there is a difference. Okay. When we are talking about patients, they are coming and asking for laser correction, presbyopia, those less than 30% of our uh, practice but for the lens base means that those that they are above uh, 55 and 60 and they are they having cataract and they are asking for distance and near they are more than more than 50 percent so the percentage changes in the last 10 years and it's, oh, sure. it's uh, continued increasing yes sure this is what uh, uh, this is what i'm education. highlighting yes. yeah the patient yeah. education now now i was in a meeting and one of my colleagues beside me is another doctor the first issues that ask me, you are an eye doctor? I said, yes. Uh, what do you think about the trifocality? And though they are saying that it's creating halos. And so this is the, the first question that he asked me. I said, well, we need another session because I'm just going to a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to a meeting discussing the presbyopia. Anyway, uh, so okay. this is the main, because their education, they are asking and their demand, the near is, is a high demand. Uh, 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 Ashraf, we are spending more than eight hours on on reading, and you can imagine that eight hours on reading, true. wearing wearing the glasses. So uh, I have a distance near uh, uh, six x, but the near. So I'm I'm diabetic. So I'm looking for a surgeon that doing uh, trifocality for me. Okay, so yeah. um, I, I, we we should conclude this session that uh, we we should increase the awareness of presbyopic treatment for patients nowadays because the needs for the intermediate and the near is increasing day by day. Yeah. So we should um, uh, educate our patients yeah. about the different uh, possibilities, either through the cornea or through the lens to reach the best outcome for our patient. This is, this is uh, the aim of our uh, session today. So uh, I should say, uh, thank uh, everyone uh, for being here, Dr. Hussein as a panelist, uh, Dr. Safwan, Dr. Khalil Larfer, Dr. Uh, Sandeep Mitra, and, every, and everyone, and Khalil Ayesh, and uh, Dr. Mohamed Al Amri. Uh, and thanks all the audience uh, were with us and to meet uh, in another session uh, soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Osama. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.